Welcome everyone to the second round of the FIDE Candidates 2024 happening here at the Great Hall in Toronto, Canada. We are right now at the playing hall of this tournament and this is where the second round happened. I'm going to take you through all the games but I just want to tell you today was a bloody round. Six decisive games out of eight. Can you believe it? And all four decisive games in the open section, two decisive games in the women. And I'm going to take you through all these decisive games. Let's first go to the board where Vidit Gujarati managed to create the upset of the day by beating world number three, Hikaru Nakamura. How this happened was completely insane. Vidit won the game in 29 moves. Now you see, I have to be very careful because the space is a little bit cramped because you see there are cameras, there are chairs. So have to be very careful while moving around. But we come here to this game. And with it was sitting here on this board with the black pieces. And just the last move, Hikaru has pushed his pawn to d4. Now, in the past, all the players had moved their bishop back. By the way, this well-known position in the Berlin. But Vidit here comes up with a new move, c6. And this, Vidit revealed in the press conference that it was an idea of one of his seconds. Now, the game could have gotten very sharp if Nakamura would have taken, take, take. And I believe Vidit would have put his knight here. And he would be well prepared. He's pawned down, but, you know, his pieces are here. So Hikaru thought, well, you know, Vidit is well prepared. Let me not take any chances here. And so what he did was, he moved his bishop back to d3. Now Vidit moved his bishop back. Hikaru took, took, and then snatched this pawn on e5. And here, Vidit unleashed an amazing move. Black to play. What would you do? Try to think here. So Vidit played this move. Bam! Bishop takes h3. And this is where... Everyone started to tell with it that you don't need bishops, yeah? Like yesterday against Gukesh, he played his bishop to g4, sacrificing it. Today, he put his bishop on h3. But the very key and subtle point is that after takes, here, there's this very nice little move, queen b8. And with queen b8, what you are trying to do is you are attacking this knight, and if the knight moves, then your queen jumps in. Notice how this bishop pins the pawn. So this is what was with its idea. You know this move, queen b8. Very interesting idea that was played here. And uh, because of this, by the way, I'm just wondering, after queen b8, bishop f4, is this some sort of a defense here? Bishop goes back. Oh, bishop goes back to c7. Asim has become a big expert now. He understands chess deeply. And yes, this is a pin and you lose a piece. So this was all preparation for Vidit. And Hikaru here uh, did not take this bishop. He decided to move his knight back to c4. Vidit uh, brought this bishop back, attacking the queen. You can't push the pawn, it's pinned. Queen c2, bishop went back to c7. And Hikaru pushed his pawn to e5. The game became super sharp. Knight d7, bishop takes, king h8. And I think this is where Hikaru went wrong with first bishop d3. Uh, that was played. And with it slowly started to, to gain control here. For example, he went b5. Saga, can you go back to that position where bishop is at the corner? Yes. So what's the defense here? We are yes. going to put... Saga on the I think queen e4 is the move, right? Yeah, queen e4. I had seen this actually and Vidit was telling me in the uh, analysis, in the interview that after f5, he thought he is winning here. So he had no clue because after takes, I said that, you know, engine is saying this is the best move, but he said takes, takes, he couldn't find where is you the... Bishop. Yeah, you give up this bishop, maybe. Yeah, that's a difference. Yeah, it's a very difficult uh, defense that was there, queen e4, and which Vidit had also not seen, and Hikaru also did not see. And after takes, knight takes, I think the final mistake of the game happened with bishop e2. Uh, he, Hikaru should have taken here on g4, but he went back, and Vidit found this beautiful move, f5, 
and now with this central structure, bishop looking here, knight to move and queen coming in, it was already game over. Vidit won this game and did this in beautiful style. What I absolutely loved, you know, the many moments which happened after he won, he came to the press conference and all of it. But what I absolutely loved was when he was going outside this hall, there were Indian fans outside the, the main entrance and they all shouted and they all cheered for Vidit. These are the moments for which you play chess, you know, at the end of the day. And I think Vidit must be so, so happy. But okay, it's just the start of the tournament. Two, two games are over, one and a half points for Vidit. But I'm sure he is in great, great spirits. Let's go to the next game, which I think was very interesting. This board where Pragnananda took on Gukesh. Now, what I loved about this game is at the start of the game, the varying emotions that were around, you know. Prag came very relaxed to the hall. Uh, you know, uh, he and Vaishali entered. Prag came here. He sat down. He was writing his score sheet. He had these chocolates, by the way. Prag has this uh, dark chocolates, which he chocolate which he likes, lint, and he brought that with him. And here, Gukesh sat and he was like completely closed his eyes for 10 minutes and he did not move. It was as if someone was deeply meditating here, you know. Uh, so game was very interesting because I just want to take you through the opening. I was very surprised. So Prague went d4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight to f3, d5 and Prague played g3, the Catalan. Gukesh gave a check. And this is where, this is where the surprise happened, where knight c3 was played. And you know, this is not a very common move. The common move is bishop d2 or knight d2. But knight c3 was played. Gukesh snatched the pawn. He said, free pawn, thank you. Bishop g2, they castled. Castled. And here, knight came out to c6. e4 was played here. And uh, let me just get the moves right. A6, I believe. A3. Bishop E7. Bishop E3. B5. Queen E2. Bishop B7. Rook D1. And Knight A5. It was such a complicated position. And here, Prague went D5. He was so well prepared, he was just blitzing out his moves and after takes, he pushed his pawn even further. And after 98, he even gave up further pawn e6. And this is where I think everyone got very tensed for Gukesh because Prague was blitzing out his moves. Gukesh was thinking what to do, but Gukesh is this man with great, great belief in himself. You know, once I had asked him, Gukesh, do you think you can find good move in any position? And Gukesh said, the only thing which kind of stops him from finding good moves in any position is time. If enough, given enough time, he can find a good move in any position. And that he did here. He played his pawn to f5. And then when the knight jumped in, he put his knight here. And you know, he fought back. In fact, later on, the structure happened this way. And very weird moves started to happen. You know, knight came here, here. It was like very cramped. But Gukesh managed to power through and win his game, which is what was epic here. And I think Gukesh continues this massive plus score against Pragnananda. He has beaten him in several tournaments and he managed to beat him once again here. Press one, please. I don't have the space again. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Let's go to the next game here. This is where uh, we see the game between Yan Nepom Nishi, who is playing with the white pieces here, against Ali Reza Firuja. I think it was the craziest game of the day. There was so much that was happening. So we join the action here. Uh, Queen A2 was played to attack the knight. And when the knight jumped back, he played his bishop back here. And I was so surprised with this move. Because now after take, take, just think about it guys. Queen takes d3, what have you done with white? You have mangled your pawns, you've given up a pawn, but Nepo simply played his king up. And he's saying, everything is good. And then when the queen went back, he attacked the queen. Queen went here and guess his move next. H4, <laughs> this this chess. Well, Nepo saying, my bishop is amazing, knight is strong, you can't move. And then, you know, some king h8 happened. He even pushed further down the board. He then, and, and in the game, something like h6, g5, and all craziness happened in the end. Nepo managed to win this game. I was like, wow, this is really tremendous. And Nepo once again shows why he's so good at candidates. He won his game. He's now one and a half out of two. Going to the game here between Fabiano Caruana and Nijat Abasov. This was the game where Nijat was kind of holding his own, maybe queen e6. He's worse, but can fight. But he made a terrible blunder, I think in time trouble. He took here, Fabi took back, queen b3. And then after rook takes a5, came this very cool move, rook f1. And I think Nijat can basically resign here because, you know, uh, rook is coming in and then queen here, and it's a, it's a huge attack and the game ended. So, uh, quite a quick collapse for Nijat Abbasov, uh, who's playing quite well, but Fabi also joins the leader's pack. We had Vaishali here, playing against Tan Zhongi. Uh, here, and I think the game was complicated, but look at the attack Tan Zhongi managed to build with white against Vaishali. Uh, and she played the move f5 here, Vaishali, which was the final mistake of the game because Tan Zhongi put her rook here, then in came the knight check, and the attack was decisive, and uh, Vaishali lost the game. Tan Zhongi is the only player in this tournament with two out of two. She is in tremendous form. I, in fact, even interviewed her here. Uh, she doesn't speak English much, but it was translated, and she gave some very nice answers. Uh, she is maybe one of the hot favorites to win this tournament. Somehow she's so cool, calm, and I think very strong. Um, Okay, um, okay, so for the, my game against Vaishali, um, there was no one specific mistake, um, but I generally just had a better, much better and better position, and, um, and unfortunately, the danger, uh, th there was no one danger, specifically dangerous moment. Last game, which I want to show, was the game between uh, Alexandra Goryachkina and Anna Muzichuk. Uh, this one was interesting from the opening perspective because it happened from the exchange variation of Slav. CD, CD, Bishop F4, Knight, uh, I think it was Knight C6, E3, Knight F6, Knight C3, Bishop F5. It was very symmetrical, E5, E6, and now Knight jumped to E5. Takes, takes. Looks like a lot of London types. Yeah, London, London type, but actually Slough 
exchange slough. This is uh, played before, but here Goryachkina found this, uh, I mean, this was her preparation, this move. Pawn takes, bishop d5, a6. And I was very, very surprised that she went into this line, pawn down. But you go knight a4, you're basically looking to come here. And I think somehow Alex, uh, Anna Muzichuk managed to get a good position, but in the end, she simply collapsed. Uh, she blundered, and Goryachkina managed to score a full point, which was very important. By the way, Goryachkina is the rating favorite here. Two more games, Humpy and uh, Katrina Lagno, they drew. And the game between uh, Salimova and Le Tingye also ended in a draw. So in the women's section, we have a clear leader in Tan Zhongyi and then Goryachkina, who's on one and a half points. So that was today. Very, very interesting day of chess. You know, I was so thrilled. It was like one thing happening after another. And this is what the candidates is all about. It's uh, bloody candidates. You know, there are some candidates which are calm, where a plus three score will get you to the title, you know, three wins out of 14 rounds and all, rest all draws. But I think here it will be plus five or even plus six to win the title. And that's why we got to follow it. These are the pairings for tomorrow. Join all the action. I think one of the games that I'll be looking forward to immensely is the game between Pragnananda and Vidit. It will be a very, very exciting day of chess tomorrow. For now, this is Sagar Shah signing off. Bye bye. Bye. Yo, that's the goat. I'll sign it. Poor guy. Yeah. Yeah.